A man was out for revenge and his disturbing plot led to one of the largest investigations in state history. Here's a look at the Eric Williams murders in today's True Crime Chronicles. Kaufman, Texas is a small, quaint, and quiet town. But in 2013, it became the site of fear and chaos. Mark Hassey was well known as the Kaufman County's assistant district attorney. He handled some of the toughest cases in the county. It was January 31, 2013. Mark pulled up to the courthouse for work and was shot outside his car in the early morning hours. Moments later, a gunman was seen fleeing the scene. Who I feel sorry for is Mark Hassey. Mark Hassey's mother, a mature woman in her 80s, that her son was killed in the street for doing his job. Police conducted a massive manhunt for the killer. Two months passed, and a town already on edge was hit again. Kaufman County District Attorney Mike McClelland and his wife Cynthia were found dead inside their home. Early Wiley, the current DA, was appointed after his death. She and other elected officials were living in fear. It was a lesson learned that you don't know who might be the one that's coming after you. A month later, police arrest Eric Williams and his wife Kim for all three murders. I think Eric thought he was beyond the law and that he was smarter than everybody. Eric Williams was a former attorney who had been convicted of burglary and theft while in office. McClelland and Hassey both prosecuted him for the crime. Police later learned the two men were on his hit list, and so was the current DA. It was all part of Williams' plan to get revenge. And he planned to kill me because I had the audacity to question him. And his warped mind, I was the beginning of his end. A year later, Eric was found guilty of capital murder and sentenced to death. Wiley wrote a book about living in fear and the terror Williams caused. He is gone now, but my county and I survived. Earlier, Al and I spoke with a reporter who was in the courtroom for this trial. Take a look. And we are joined by investigative reporter Tanya Iser from WFAA in Dallas, Texas. So, Tanya, thank you so much for joining us and bringing this story to light. Uh, how horrifying. How did police determine that Eric was responsible for the murders? What evidence did they have to charge him? And this is probably one of the most horrific and crazy cases I have ever covered in my career as a police reporter. Um, the, the commonality here in the victims is that Mark Hassey and Mike McClelland had prosecuted Eric Williams for the theft of these county computers back when he was a justice of the peace. So everybody suspected Eric Williams, but the linchpin uh, in terms of evidence was uh, investigators found a Crime Stoppers tip number in Eric's home, that's a that's a tip number that only the person uh, that made that tip could have had. And when he made these tips, he said some things that only the killer could have known. And then the other key piece of evidence was a live round that had cycled through the weapon uh, that had killed the McClellans that was found in a storage shed that Eric Williams had had a friend rent secretly. Well, speaking of Eric, he's on death row right now. Obviously, he's trying to appeal that process. Can you give us an update on what his status is? And how about his former wife, Kim? Like, what's going on with her? Eric's been on death row now for five and a half years. Uh, he's still in the process of appealing. Uh, it's going to the Court of Criminal Appeals now. Uh, Kim Williams has you know, got a 40-year sentence. She doesn't come up for even a parole hearing until 2033, mm. and her release date is 2053, if, assuming uh, that she was never granted parole. Unbelievable. So here's the thing, Tanya. As you know, Eric has only given one jailhouse interview. What did he have to say about all of this? Not surprisingly, Eric Williams continues uh, to d deny these killings, and having covered this whole case and watched him in the trial, that really doesn't surprise me. It was very clear uh, when this 12-member jury found him guilty and then sentenced him to the death penalty that he was surprised. I think he really thought he was going to get away with it. Yeah, uh, from what I know about the story, too, he just, just seems like a, a pure narcissist, and um, I, I really hope that, that justice is will continue to be served. Uh, Tanya, thank you so much. And to all of our DBL viewers, to read more on this case, visit first WFAA.com. You can also listen to the podcast episode, Eric Williams Murder, which is out now. Just search True Crime Chronicles on your favorite podcast player. 